Good morning to you all. Today is our midweek service, uh, it's Wednesday, and we, we just uh, hope that you are going to enjoy the word of God as we meet together for worship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, search us, we pray, and identify an area in our lives that is not pleasing to you. And may we live godly in Jesus Christ and in submissive obedience to Holy Spirit. We pray that we may fulfill all that we have, you would have us to do in our lives. To your praise and glory. We ask you this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll ask you, Brother Ben to come and read the word of God. From the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 9. Good morning, and I hope your week's going really well. Um, halfway through, and we're blessed to have a, a midweek message from Johnson. Um, I just encourage you to give someone a call and just say, how are you? And when they say, all right, ask them, how are you really? But that's all good. Uh, this week's Thanksgiving um, from 1 Corinthians 1, 4 to no, uh, 3 to 9, sorry. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I always give thanks. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord, and this is the word of the Lord. So we'll get Johnson back to hear his message for the week. Can't wait. Thanks, Johnson. Thank you so much, Brother Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, I would share with you on the theme, Resolutions for a New Year. Resolutions for a New Year. Happy New Year. No, the calendar is not one month off. Today is New Year's Day, or maybe New Year's Week, at least as far as the church is concerned. Today is the first Wednesday in Advent, which is the beginning of the church year. True, most people think of the season of Advent as simply preparing for Christmas, at a time to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus, to make room for him in the inn of our hearts. And of course, Advent is that. But it is more as well. Advent is the time we prepare our hearts for another year of study and serves as a part of Christ's church. For the church then, today really is 30 day into the church's liturgical calendar. And since it's New Year, what could be more appropriate than New Year's resolutions? New Year's resolutions, do you bother them? I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to spend more time with my family. I've heard people saying those things. Those are New Year's re resolutions. I sympathize with the fellow who was working on his resolution for the new year. Once was to clean up his desk. He did found last year's list of resolutions. Mike Taiwan offered one of my favorites. This year I'm going to live within my means if I have to borrow money or to do it. So look at the passage from 1 Corinthians, the lectionary epistle first for the first Sunday in Advent and use it to begin our work. What is the first thing we run into? Paul's greeting to the church. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In, on verse 3. If we take those words and don't, then consider verses immediately following, we find some fruitful direction for resolution building. Of course, the place to begin is at the beginning. What is the very first word? Grace God went. It is one around which we cannot only build a New Year's resolution, 
but in entire theology, grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. There is something extra special in knowing that the new year begins with grace. God's unmerited favor. We have grown up in a society that tells us you get what you pay for. There is no such thing as a free lunch, free food. But grace is never paid for, never end. It is just there. A fellow traveling stood by a restaurant for breakfast. He ordered eggs, bacon, and toast, only to be surprised by an amorphous white mass on his plate when the food was served. What is this? He asked it. Grits, replied the waitress. I didn't order grits, said the traveler. No matter, said the waitress. They just come. So grace is like grits. It just comes. You don't need to wait for it. If the church can remember that God's first word to us is grace, then any number of other problems will disappear. We would never have blood baths in the name of Jesus Christ. We would never have the crusades. We would never have the inquisition. We would never have the salam witch trials. And we would never end in an ungracious manner towards anyone. You have heard you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Then in terms of our New Year's resolution, the thinking would be that more people are loved into the kingdom than argued or intimidated into the kingdom. Our first resolution then might be, we as a church and we as individual Christians will be gracious, no fault finding, no backbiting, no pettiness, we will be gracious in the way we treat each other and the way we treat those outside the faith. Let us resolve to show God's grace. Next, grace to you and peace. In verse 3, as we move into this special season, when we think of peace on earth, it would be most blessed if we would enjoy real peace, settled in our violent world. But most especially within the fellowship of the church, we need to experience grace. Of all places on earth, the one that claims to save the Prince of Peace should be expected to be the most peaceful. Unfortunately, peace in the church is more of a dream than a reality. Over the course of ecclesiastical history, there have been so much incredible church fights. Should infants be baptized or only adults? It's a question that has divided the church. Should children be allowed to take communion before confirmation? Do women have the same standing as men in the church? How literally are we supposed to understand the Bible? What did we say about human sexuality, abortion, capital punishment, and so on? The fight goes on. What is it that we say? In local congregations, there have been some terrible battles. Even some church splits over crucial questions like whether the new sanctuary carpet should be red or blue, whether the offering should be taken before the sermon or after. Those are wonderful issues to go to war about, aren't they? People fight over those issues. But Christians do. No, they do. There does not seem to be a great deal of peace in the church. As a matter of fact, I wonder how much good a new year's resolution about peace would be Seen as that we are, it may be doomed before it starts. Perhaps we would be more realistic in trying to make any resolution about peace by considering what the Apostle Paul does as he gets behind this greeting in the letter to the church at Corinth. Listen again to what he says. I always thank God for you because of his grace given in you, Jesus Christ. For in him we have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Paul starts off with something nice. What do we find next? Grace and peace from God our Father. 
How do we make a resolution about God? How do we know that about God and that would lend itself to preparing for a new year? Well, we have learned since childhood that God is love, that God is all powerful and all knowing, and that God is the source of everything. The list goes on and on. But if we are giving ourselves some good direction for the coming year, perhaps it will again be helpful to note what Paul talks about as he continues his letter. The Apostle Paul says, You do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for. Our Lord Jesus comes to be relieved in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. Well, we have been given spiritual gifts. We know they, where they come from. From God. Okay? How does that become a New Year's resolution? For us as Christians. First of all, there is something in Paul's statement that is really a little surprising. He says the church is not lacking in any spiritual gift. Which means every one of us has got a gift. Are we using those gifts to build the church? Or are we using those gifts to tear down the church? Paul explains a bit later on in, in the letter. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, and also those who have gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking different kinds of tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Then Paul goes on at length about the most important gift of all, the gift of love. That is quite a list. But what is most surprising is when Paul says that even a church is messed up as the one at Corinth, it them all. <laughs> so the implication is that the church in our own day continues to have them all. We continue to have all these gifts. We begin to get into something about which we can make a New Year's resolution. If we indeed all have all spiritual gifts, if there is really nothing we are incapable of doing spiritually, then the resolution to take those gifts is put them to work. Let's put the gifts we have to work. Not let them lie dormant. Some people are gifted. Maybe they've got more than one gift. But they, are, they put these gifts to disuse. They're not even working. Of course, one of the things that Paul took pains to point out to the people in Corinth was that every individual did not have every gift. We all have them all as we come together in the worshiping community. So for the church, the task is to seek out the spiritual gifts among the individual members. For you and me, the task is to make ourselves available so that the church can put those gifts that God has given to use in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us avail our, the gifts that we have. If we don't show up to say, this is what I'm gifted in, every time you think or even complain and think that you don't have a gift, the reason is that you are not using the gifts that you have been given. So speaking of Jesus, that leads us to the final note of Paul's greeting to the church. Grace and peace to you from our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come with a resolution concerning grace and peace with and God. What do we resolve about the Lord Jesus Christ? Perhaps we get a clue from how often Paul refers to Jesus in these few verses at the beginning of his letter. In the opening 10 verse, the name appears 10 times. That's a lot. In just short verses, 10 times. If the Apostle Paul would, would come to us today and have anything to say about New Year's resolution for the church, you would say, please, please, please resolve to be a Christian-centered church. <laughs> be a Christian-centered church. We are now taking the church to become like a club. The church has now become a club where we cannot even allow anyone to intrude in our club. Are you a member for you to be part of our church? The church is an open house for everyone to come because that is where Jesus Christ is found. New Year's resolutions to show grace to each other and the world at large. To seek peace by being as positive with one another as we can. To honor God by putting our spiritual gifts to use in God's service. 
and to be genuinely Christ-centered people, both as individuals and as a church. Let us be Christ-centered people. God grant us the strength and the resolve to follow through. Oh yes, I continue to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year because this is the first week of Advent. Happy New Year. Are you resolving something for the beginning of the year? Church calendar. I'm talking of the Christian church calendar. Not talking about the New Year as 1st of January. I'm talking about the Christian calendar. It starts today. So I'm saying, Happy New Year to you. May God bless you as you continue to digest over these words and think and meditate upon the scriptures so that the grace of God may be found also in you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father God, we confess that we could not draw another breath without your strength. Thank you that you have covered us with the robe of Christ's righteousness. For his name's sake, and a promise to keep us and sustain us through every season of our lives, until we stand in his presence and we are presented to you as blameless, and enable us to finish the work that you have given us to do for your praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 May we receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.